Hi everyone and welcome on another one of our virtual Yellowstone tours. We're at West Thumb Geyser Basin and there's almost always an elk herd here at West Thumb and there is an elk lying in the shade of that little tree. West Thumb Geyser Basin is my favorite geyser basin in the entire park. It's located right at uh, the very bottom of the lower loop, the southern section of the lower loop. If you go to yellowstonetours.net forward slash map, that's yellowstonetours.net forward slash map, you can see exactly where West Thumb Geyser Basin is, is located. Take a look at the map and you'll see that there is a purple line that more or less follows the lower loop of the park. That purple line shows where the caldera is or was. And I'll get back to that at the moment, in a moment. Over here we have some paint pots. That is not the paint pots, that is a hot spring. But here are some paint pots, and you'll find all four of Yellowstone's thermal features at West Thumb. And this is a beautiful overview of the lake, isn't it? It's almost the middle of July, there's still a bit of snow on the mountains on the far side. These are paint pots, but uh, because we're in the middle of the summer, there's still quite a lot of water around, and the paint pots are a lot more wet. Not quite as paint potish like, if you like, as uh, you would normally expect them to be. I was telling you about the caldera. There's that soft purple line that goes around the lower loop, and that shows where the gigantic hole in the ground was that uh, was left when the Yellowstone supervolcano last erupted about 620,000 years ago, or 640,000 years ago, depending on who you want to believe. One thing about so many of the pools here, the hot springs here, is that they are so beautifully clear. So the supervolcano lost erupted, say, 625,000 or 640,000 years ago, and it left this gigantic hole in the ground, and that is what we call the caldera. The reason I mention that over here is that what is unique about West Thumb is that scientists believe that it was created also by an explosion, by a volcanic eruption, and that the West Thumb area is a caldera within a caldera. Now, those of you who've watched several of these videos will know that I've told you before that where you see these white or pale areas, it's a sign of a thermal area, or we can clearly see it's a thermal area. But this white is center that has been brought up from underground by geysers or other thermal features as uh, water comes up bringing with it minerals from underground. So I was telling you that West Thumb is a caldera within a caldera. And it's called West Thumb because if you look at it on the map and you use your imagination quite a bit, you can just about make out the shape of a, of a thumb. We're now down at Yellowstone Lake, this beautiful blue lake. Yellowstone Lake is the largest alpine lake in the United States and the second largest alpine lake in the world. Look at the color of the water. I'm just going to pause for a moment. Lake Tahoe is a larger lake, but it's uh, not located at altitude the way that Yellowstone Lake is. 
if we have a look tours on the lake so I mentioned that that is in a general southerly direction the reason I mentioned that is that um, in the old days the way that people used to come to West Ham would be to take the stage coach faithful direction and it was a very bumpy, very dirty and dusty ride and you get off the stagecoach over here at West Ham, take a walk around and then you'd have a choice. You can either continue on the stagecoach towards Lake Hotel, towards Lake Hotel which is up in the West Ham direction over there. Here's another one of these really small features that I love so much. I mentioned to you that you can see them on Firehall Lake Drive as well. So you can either stay on the stagecoach, get back on it, and these, by the way, are underwater geysers, believe it or not. Uh, that over there is Lakeshore Geyser. Yes, there are geysers underwater, so you can either stay on the um, on the wagon, or you could head off down in that direction over there and catch a steamboat. And the steamboat would take you over Yellowstone Lake, and you would eventually land up at Lake Hotel, which is one of the grand buildings uh, here at, at Yellowstone, and, and indeed in the entire national park system. We're going to be coming up to Fishing Cone Geyser. That's a very unique geyser. It got, it got its name because You'd have people fishing here, and uh, this goes back uh, to the 1800s. And somebody, a fisherman, the story goes, was fishing here, and uh, the fish sort of flipped around and landed up in Fishing Cone Geyser. That's it over there. And when it came out, it was cooked. And I'm not making the story up. And soon this became a very popular tourist attraction. People would come down here and uh, have their picture taken wearing um, an apron and a chef's hat. And it became one of the main tourist attractions, if not the main tourist attraction here at, at West Ham Geyser Basin. In fact, Superintendent uh, Falaitis. Felitas uh, Norris, who you've heard me talk about before, would bring his guests down here. And it was even brought up in Congress. Members of Congress were hooting, hooting and hollering about uh, coming down to Yellowstone and actually cooking your fish inside uh, a geyser. Now, that can be potentially dangerous because that was at the time an active geyser. It erupted in 1919. It erupted again in 1939. And there was a fisherman who was badly burned. I can't remember what year it was, but that geyser used to erupt to about 40 feet, although it hasn't erupted recently at all. The practice, though, has been banned now, and you don't want to cook your fish inside the inside the anymore. These two pools coming up here are really splendid pools. The boardwalk system here has been changed a little bit and uh, you can't get as close to them as you used to. It's a lot, a lot darker. One of them's Abbas Pool, I can't remember the name of the other one offhand. 
but we can see how blue it is and as the water cools down and runs off so more and more organisms are able to live in that area and uh, and the pool becomes uh, not the pool but the area around it becomes a lot more more colorful so that is gorgeously blue isn't it There's Blackpool. There's Yellowstone Lake. Once again, this is July and there's still small leaf mountains over there. We'll head up to Abyss Pool. Abyss Pool, I suppose, is the better way to pronounce it. And I'm sorry if my voice sounds muffled today. I am wearing a mask and you can see that a lot of other people are as well. Maybe before Black Bull. It's so deep. You can see now why you need to stay off these thermal areas. The ground is just so thin in places around it. Once again, where the water runoff is, we can see that uh, it becomes a lot more, a lot more colourful. That's the Grand Loop Road over there, heading up towards Fishing Bridge this area is uh, that you can see geysers erupting next to the lake that you didn't even know were there. I'll be driving along and suddenly see a geyser going up. Watch out for that. And these trees over here, it's not, it's not unusual to see them. Now, where's Thumb Geyser Basin? used to be actually quite a commercial hotspot in the old days. There used to be a campground here, there were cabins, there was a, a photo shop, there was a cafeteria. And sometime in the 1980s, the Park Service decided that uh, they would shut all that down so they could better preserve the natural beauty that makes West Ham so amazing. of dead and dying hot springs here as well. Now the main trail back to the parking lot continues up there. If we were to carry on in a uh, counterclockwise direction, we would get back to the parking lot. But you have this trail as well that also cuts across. And there's a number of pretty delightful hot springs. These are called Twin Geyser. Although if you look how dry they are, you wonder when the last time they erupted. You'll get a better view of it from up at the top, but there's a lot of what appear to be defunct or extinct hot springs and geysers in this area.
And she has another one. These clear blue pools, this is blue funnel. Up there is where people are going back towards the parking lot. Once again, you can see how thin that rock is. And again over here, far side over there, if you were to stand on that, you would go through in no time. heading up uh, towards the trail where we came in not too far from where that elk was. You can see there's not that many people here compared to the Lower Geyser Basin, the Midway Geyser Basin and the Upper Geyser Basin where Old Faithful is. I could never really understand why because this is such a stunningly beautiful basin as I mentioned at the start of this. This really is my favorite geyser basin in all of Yellowstone. I suspect it's because it's a little bit, not really out of the way, but it's a little bit away from the other geyser basins. Most people want to go and do the better known ones, the upper geyser basin, as I said, the mid midway and the lower. There's that elk again. But uh, this is very easy to find, as I explained towards the beginning of this video. When you're coming up from a Jackson Hole area or Grand Teton, you'll leave Grand Teton and enter, come across the Rockefeller Parkway and then enter Yellowstone at the south entrance. You'll go past um, Lewis Falls, Lewis Lake. And then you'll run into the Grand Loop Road and West Thumb is right there. It's just on your right. It's very easily accessible and coming the other way, coming down from Old Faithful, you'll get to the point where you can turn left to go to Fishing Bridge or carry on straight towards Jackson and Grand Teton. And once again on your left is West Thumb Geyser Basin. Thank you for joining us on another one of these virtual Yellowstone tours. If you enjoy our Yellowstone tour series, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. Otherwise, see you in Yellowstone.